Vectors, by definition, is a quantity with both magnitude and direction, and usually it represents force, tension, and other quantities. Now, I have two illustrations of a vector, one in standard form and one vector on a plane. So this one is a vector in the standard form because you'll notice the initial point or the starting point of your vector is at point of origin, which is 0, 0, and here is your initial point, which is denoted by u sub 1 and u sub 2. Now, this is a vector because it has um, magnitude and direction and the direction in this particular vector is going to that direction and the magnitude in this case will be the length of your vector so this is your magnitude and this is how you represent a vector which both has its direction and its magnitude now for this second illustration I have a second vector wherein the initial point will be at point P1 and P2, and the terminal point as Q1 and Q2. sub Now, this is initial because the, it's where it starts, and this is your terminal because this is where your vector ends. Now, there are two things that you need to understand about vectors. One, how to find the component or component form of a vector given points and its magnitude. Now, the component of the vector is given by this formula, Q1 sub minus P1, sub comma q sub 2 minus p sub 2 and its magnitude will be given by this notation which is similar to an absolute value of a, a given um, vector so to find its magnitude magnitude or your um, length it is equal to square root of q sub 1 minus p sub 1 squared plus q sub 2 minus p sub 2 squared and we'll use those two formulas in our problem later on Now, on the first example, let's find the component in the magnitude of a vector with the initial point at 3, negative 2, and terminal point at negative 1, 1. Now, here's our initial point, and this is our terminal point. Now, it's important that you take note of the initial and the terminal point because your answer will be dependent on those points. And you don't want to uh, get a negative answer or a positive answer when it's supposed to be otherwise. Now, the component of your vector is given by the formula q sub 1 minus p sub 1 and q sub 2 minus p sub 2. So therefore, you simply subtract q sub 1, which is negative 1, minus 3 for the first ordered pair. And for the second ordered pair, we have q2 minus p sub 2, so we have 1 minus negative 2. And simplify your operation, and you'll end up with negative 4 and 3. So this is the component of your vectors given the initial point and the terminal point. Now, to, to find its magnitude or its length, you just need to use the formula that I've showed you on the previous slide. So we have square root of q sub 1 minus p sub 1 squared plus q sub 2 minus p sub 2 squared. Now, notice that this is basically the first ordered pair that we just solve from the component of the vector and this is your second ordered pair so to skip a step all I need to do is to use my first ordered pair and my second ordered pair so I have square root of negative 4 squared plus 3 squared which gives me the square root of 16 plus 9 and 16 plus 9 is the square root of 25 which gives me 5 so the magnitude of this vector will be 5 so to summarize Here's your component, which is negative 4 and 3, and the magnitude of your vector is equal to 5. Another thing that you need to understand about vectors is the unit vector. The unit vector is, ve uh, is basically a vector of length 1. So it still has its magnitude and direction, but you uh, um, sort of shortened it into um, a length of 1. So this is your vector. This is it of unit 1 because it has 1 on its length. So to uh, be able to find the unit vector, let's say I have vector 3 and 4, all you have to do is to use this formula, which is your given vector all over its magnitude. So to find the unit vector for 3 and 4, I'll just find my magnitude first. So I have the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which gives me 9 plus 16 which gives me the magnitude of 5. So to plug it into the formula, the unit vector, which is denoted by this symbol, will be the given vector, which is 3, 4, all over its magnitude, which is 5. Now we know that 
um, the denominator 5 can be represented as 1 over fifth, and by scalar multiplication or the distributive property, we can change this form into vector 3 over 5 and 4 over 5. So this is your unit vector by shortening it or making it um, a magnitude or a length of 1. So this is how you use your formula. Now for the vector operations, let's say I have two vectors. I have v equals negative 2, 5, and w equals 3, 4. We're going to find vectors 2v, w minus v, and v plus w using the vector properties. And here are the vector properties. So we have several properties that we could use in vector operations, and all of these will be uh, used to find the solution for our three problems. Now going back to our problem right here, wherein I have two vectors, to find 2v, all you have to do is to multiply or do scalar multiplication for vector v using 2, and by distributing 2 to negative 2 and 5, you'll have 2 times negative 2 and 2 times 5, so 2v is equal to vector negative 4 and 10. And for letter b, the difference between vector w minus v is simply w, which is 3 and 4, minus negative 2 and 5. So by subtraction properties that I have shown you a while ago, 3 minus negative 2 and 4 minus 5 will give you a vector of 5 and negative 1. So this is how you represent w minus v. And for the last problem, we have v plus 2w. So we have to um, distribute or do scalar multiplication for vector w by 2. So I'll have v, which is negative 2 and 5, and w, which is 3 and 4. Scalar multiply it by 2, so I'll have 6 and 8. And by adding them together, I'll have negative 2 plus 6 and 5 plus 8, which gives me vector 4 and 13.